Hello lovely stitchy friends, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel Catkin and Lily where we talk all things cross stitch. If you're new here then I do hope you'll enjoy seeing all my cross stitch updates and as always if you're a returning viewer then thank you so much for coming back to spend some more time with me and see what I've been getting up to. Because today is a floss tube episode, it is number 19 and it's the 27th of March. I was going to say it's really starting to feel like spring now here in the UK because some of my tulips are even coming out, we've had a bit of sunshine, it's been a little bit warmer, but of course as I film this today it is grey and rainy, just to prove me wrong. But anyway, enough about the very British topic of the weather and on to some stitching. And there's a lot of stitching, again. Feels like I'm saying that every episode, there's a lot of stitching. And I actually have another two new starts. I have a finish and I have an FFO, so a fully finished object. I also have a lot of new stash. I have all that lovely fabric that I've been teasing you with that I've been buying. So I have all of that goodness to share with you. And of course I have my giveaway winners to announce which is super exciting and I'm just going to throw that in at some random point during the video so you're just going to have to watch out for that one. Now I also feel this episode possibly needs to come with a tangent warning because I just feel like that's where my brain's going today so heads up on that one and in fact I'm going straight in on a tangent because I need to share this little guy. Look at his little face. Look at that. So this little chap was sitting, he was sat right behind me in the last video and a few of you spotted him. And I thought, well, actually I did mean to tell the story of him and I completely forgot. So it was, we were away for a few days. Lovely husband, Dr. Tim and I went away for a few days. We went to Centre Parks at Longleat and it was absolutely lovely. It was very, very cold, but we had a wonderful time. And really early on in the stay, I had I'd been in one of the shops and I saw a pile of these guys. Well, actually, lovely husband, Dr. Tim, saw them and he pointed them out to me. And of course, I, I loved them. I was like, oh, that's amazing. I want one of those. No, yeah, no, I don't need one of those. They're, they're cute, but I don't need one. And lo and behold, later in the holiday, lovely husband, Dr. Tim, presented me with a paper bag and inside was this guy. He just decided I loved it so much that he would get it for me. And this is why I call him lovely husband, Dr. Tim. It's no joke, he is very lovely. And even better, this guy, you can see he's a, he's a little plushie. You can pop him in the microwave and warm him up. So he works like a hot water bottle. But whether you do that or not, he's just a lovely little companion. So yeah, thank you very much, lovely husband, Dr. Tim. Okay, so that's the first tangent out of the way. Let's, let's get into some actual stitching. And the first thing I have is my finish. And this one's a bit of a surprise because you haven't seen this before at all. So it's a start and a finish. And it's this little guy. This is one of my own designs. You may recognize it looks kind of similar to the last little bear that I did. I had bear in envelope. And now we have bear with flower. So yeah, I just, kind of whip that one up and say I haven't really even shown any progress um, of it and it's done and it's finished and I'm going to be popping it into my Etsy shop on Friday so in a couple of days time so watch out for that one and also watch out because I'm going to do a cheeky little Easter sale for everything in the shop so watch out for that one. Now the FFO that I mentioned you may have already spotted is up here so Let's see how much chaos I can cause by trying to get it down to show you properly. Grab him off its easel. So this, this is the cotton and twine box that I started on the 1st of March, finished on the 18th of March, and I fully finished it. Now, these come in the box with all the finishing bits, but of course, I've not done that. I've just finished it in my own style. So I've frayed the edges on here. I've attached it to, I have used, if I spin it round, you'll see, I've used the board that it came with, but I've attached, let's come in so you can maybe see, I've used some pretty papers. 
I've rolled some of the corners and added little pearl details so there and down here as well and I have even you'll see on the papers here that is hand stitched <laughs> because I don't own a sewing machine I like the way that little sewn edges on the paper pieces look I don't own a sewing machine and even if I did I think I'd do it by hand because I really like how that looks so yeah that's my FFO I'm really pleased with it oh I've got did you see that I just added I've got a tiny little bit of lace and twine in there as well so yeah so that was obviously all the supplies for that the fabric and the threads and everything was in the subscription box and they've got another subscription box out at the moment the March one which I'm not going to be doing um, but I will wait to see what else comes up for later in the year so that is now magically back up in its spot and we are moving on to the whips now I'm going to keep them in the usual order that I do but we have two missing this week um, one is the Christmas mugs because I haven't touched it and the other is Rossa the Mermaid because nothing's changed since you saw it a couple of weeks ago it's still just waiting for me to do beading so that means the first one I have for you is Chromatic Dragon we're starting with the big one and let's see I am at 34,609 stitches which is 16.54% so here we are with that one oh gosh yeah I'm getting to the point where I have to hold it further back now <laughs> this is going to get this is going to get harder and harder to fit in isn't it but I've been doing so this section in the middle here so I'm sort of trying to work up and out across here I'm also then filling in the dark all across the top here because there's a lot all of that corner is dark so trying to get some stitches in there as well let's give you a little a little bit closer so I've been working fairly hard on this one because it was a whip go call again for March to do 5,000 stitches and obviously we are nearing the end of March but we've got a bank holiday weekend and also the good news is I'm just doing a check it I'm at 4,240 stitches so actually that's not too bad not too many more stitches to go I've already been working on this this morning working in that dark section at the top because that's very good for getting stitch numbers so I'm going to carry on working on that today and I'm not going to get to 5,000 today but I'll be getting close so one more session and hopefully we will be there I'm also just so excited uh, every time I work on this it's really lovely um, it's just really great you really can see the progress I know it's a huge design but you still see that progress and yeah it's really lovely the next whip is all things grow with love by the historical sampler company and this was kindly gifted to me and we now have parts one two and three about so here's where we are I'm doing pretty good this is in part three part two finished just about here where the bottom of that wording is so I've just sort of made a little bit of a start into part three that's looking it's looking so pretty I can't wait to finish those words on there actually because I I quite like stitching wording I don't know why I quite enjoy that so yeah really excited to keep working on that one the last part is out on Monday bank holiday Monday the final fourth part will be out so really looking forward to that and I don't think it'll take me too long to finish so that'd be fantastic now this next one won't be finished anytime soon because it's my other stitch along it's the wonders of the James Webb Space Telescope stitch along by Climbing Goat Designs and that's 10 parts and we've had three parts come out the third part just came out on Monday and I'm not quite up together with this one I had a slightly later start waiting for my fabric so I'm still playing catch up a little bit but here's where we are and this is I filled in more hexagons so part one was the hexagons so technically I'm not done with part one because there's more hexagons to do and then this picture here the pillars of creation so part two was this picture which is the cartwheel galaxy and this one that I'm working on down here I'll show you this one 
if it will do it, is the, that is Stefan's Quintet. So there's another little sort of galaxy bit to go up there. So yeah, that's all very exciting. It is coming along nicely. As I say, I'm not quite caught up. I'll put the picture back up for, um, so you can see part three. So you can see the two new pictures that um, I've got available to be able to start as soon as I finish Stefan's Quintet. So the two new pictures are, the one at the bottom is Titan. So that is Saturn's largest moon. And the other one is the Phantom Galaxy, which is a large spiral galaxy first spotted by Charles Messier in the 18th century. And he listed it in his catalogue of non-comet objects. He didn't know what they were. He just found all these things. He just knew they weren't comets because they weren't moving, but he didn't really know what they were. So according to lovely husband, Dr. Tim, that meant that a lot of astronomers generally know this as Messier's list of fuzzy objects that are definitely not comets. So there you go. So it's really fun stitching these and also really fun kind of learning about all of these astronomy things as well. And yeah, I think lovely husband, Dr. Tim is really enjoying it, um, seeing what's coming out and seeing me stitch it. The next whip that you've seen so far before we get into new starts is of course The Sorceress by Joan Elliott. And this is just still, it's my, when I pick it up, I don't want to put it down kind of project. So I think you'll see, I've made some quite good progress. Here's where we're at. That is the bottom of the chair. So yeah, I've got the chair there all her dress I've got most of a cat it is looking yeah the back end of the cat is a little bit weird and there's a bit more to go in there um, but that nothing really I can say about this other than I just want to stitch this all the time but I do love my other whips as well so you know gotta gotta share the love okay so I said I also had two new starts and neither of them were super planned, but the first one was very, very accidental. Um, sort of a surprise. Because I needed something to take to work. I do like to have a little stitch while I'm in work on my um, mid-morning break and at lunchtime. I don't get huge amounts of time, maybe only 20 to 25 minutes, but it all counts. And I love that stitching as a break from working just to kind of calm my brain down a little bit but I didn't have a good project. It needs to be something that isn't too complicated, isn't too big. And I just didn't have anything that actually fell in those categories. So I, last Thursday, just picked up the Four Seasons Spring by Bothy Threads. Now, you might remember I actually did kit this up, or not kit this up, sorry, it is a kit but I prepped it all. I'd put it all together, I'd sorted all the threads, I'd even put blended threads together, I'd edged the fabric. So it was all ready to go, but I had planned to start it when we went away on holiday and then I started the Sorceress. So I didn't start this one. So it was all ready to go. So it seemed silly not to just pick that one up and take it to work and start it. Which is why it doesn't have a very big start because I've just done a few days in work. So I've just got one little flower and some green. And these are half stitches. Now, this is where, tangent warning, half stitches. I have not often done projects with half stitches in, but when I have, there's always this decision to make as to which way I'm going to do them. Because the natural way to do your half stitches is the same way as the bottom leg of your cross stitches that's the way your brain will just naturally want to make them. But there is a school of thought that it will potentially look more cohesive across the whole piece if you stitch your half stitches going the same way as the top arm of your cross stitch. And I quite like that school of thought. So I do try to go for that generally. I don't really think it matters either way, as long as you're consistent. <laughs> and here was the problem with this one, because I'd done the half stitches on, I think it was on this side, and I went over to do the half stitches on this side, and I started making them the other way. 
I'd done all these ones carefully, the same way as my top arm, and I hopped over to this side to do these ones, and I completely forgot. I think I, I got distracted and went back to doing them the way that I would normally make the bottom arm of my cross stitches. So of course I had to unpick those because I can't have them going in different directions. I mean, that might make for an interesting look, but yeah, it wasn't what I was planning on for this particular piece. So I have to try and really think about the half cross stitches, make sure I'm doing them the right way. But anyway, like I say, a little bit of a tangent, um, but hopefully I can put a few more stitches in on this. If I only stitch it in work, it's not going to get a huge amount done very quickly because I only work two days, two days a week. And yes, I know I'm very lucky with that, but I don't get a lot of work stitchy time. So I'll probably try and give this some love at other times as well, um, just to pull it along because it is really pretty. And as I say, it is now spring. So some spring stitching does feel very appropriate. And my second new start was also maybe not entirely a surprise given the lovely haul of soda stitch patterns that I showed off in my last video. Well, I say haul, I mean, for me, I, I bought four patterns. It's not exactly excessive, is it? But I had been saying I probably would have to start the coffee gnome quite soon, and I did. So I started the coffee gnome by soda stitch, and it's really lovely. I've started it on this um, 32 count linen that I'm not entirely sure what colour it is. I suspect it's platinum, although I think it's platinum or light sand, depending on where you get it. It might be flax, but I think it's platinum. And so I've started obviously with his hat on there. So that's where he's at. And that was, um, that was kind of a weekend stitching that I just decided to start it because I was away. And again, I wanted something small um, that I could take away with me. So yeah. It's, a, it's quite a good travel project, even though it is on linen. And you might be able to tell, if I hold it back here, can you see, it's kind of got some hoop marks on it. That's because I decided to try out my Nerge hoop, which I haven't actually got here, but I showed it off previously that it was part of the gift box that came with the Historical Sampler Company stitch along. And I said I was gonna give it a go, never been a fan of hoops but I said I'd give it a go and I thought it'd be good for this project because it's linen and I thought that might make it a bit easier to stitch on so I'm going to be a bit of a tease because I'm not going to give you the verdict at this point because I want to make a bit of a longer video about that but suffice to say it stayed on for a lot longer than I thought it was going to and I didn't hate it so that's the hoop headline I will go more into depth about it, uh, I think, in a, I'll just do a separate little video just to talk about that and how I feel about hoops again. Now, the other thing I might do with this one is I might need to swap some of the colours because I've pulled them out. I haven't actually got them here with me, but I'm not sure about some of the colours for the berries. And the face colours look quite <laughs> in your face. Yeah, OK, that's um, maybe a poor way to put it, but... They look very dark, um, so I might swap those out as well, but we'll see. For the moment, I'm just gonna stitch the hat and the um, moustache, and then I'll see about changing some colors if I need to. Okay, it is time for the giveaway, I think. I said I'd just throw it in somewhere random, and now is the moment. And this was for my 4,000 subscribers. Wow, still wow. And there have been even more of you subscribing since then as well. So absolutely incredible. Thank you so very much for that. I am absolutely over the moon. And I had two prizes up for grabs. And I used the YouTube random comment picker thingy to select the winners for me. So I'll pop the comments on the screen um, as I draw them so that you can see. And I'll have the, the winners names on there as well, just in case I get something wrong when I actually say it. So the first prize was this, I won't open it all out, it's really huge, but was this beautiful piece of fabric from Pole Stitches. That was a 28 count even weave in shimmering seas. And the winner of that is Flutter by Fairy 170. And I know this is lovely Nessa, who has been following me for a while and commenting. So I was actually really delighted when the comment picker 
chose this one, so congratulations to you. And the second prize was this lovely pouch from Kate Blanford with the little grumpy face needle minder. So that was the second prize and the winner for that one is Ingrid Couturier 1747. So congratulations to you. Now, as I say, I'm very sad that there could only be two winners. I only had two prizes up for grabs, but fingers crossed there will probably be more giveaways in the future. Now, if you were one of the winners, then please just drop me an email. Um, the email is, I'll pop it on screen, but it's also in the description below as well. So send me an email, let me know your address and I can get your goodies on their way to you. So the next bit I have for you is my new stash and it's all fabric. In fact, let me show you the fabric. You probably saw on the thumbnail this, yeah. This is my stash of fabric. Now, this has all been this year. It started back in January when I ordered some pieces from Chromatic Alchemy. So let's see if I can start down at the bottom of this pile and see which one's which. I ordered one option for the James Webb Space Telescope stitch along, which I didn't use. And that was this one here. So this is a beautiful piece. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and hold them, try and get the colors. If I hold it here, if I leave a bit of background up here, I think it'll show the colors a bit better. But anyway, so this is, uh, this is an 18, no, it's not an 18 count, 16 count Ada in Nereus. It's really beautiful. So I'm sure I will find something else for that. So I didn't end up using it for the James Webb Space Telescope stitch along, but I'm pretty sure I can find a use for that. And the other one I ordered was, yeah, this one. Now this one is huge. I'm, I've got this folded up. This is a quarter of it. This is, and if I bring it in, I don't know if it'll show, but this is, I mean, look, the reason this is huge, I've got a bed sheet basically, <laughs> is because I was trying to order fabric for Gaia the Earth Goddess that I want to start in May. And I thought this might be a good option and it still might. It's just a bit lighter than I thought it was going to be. But Gaia is quite a big pattern. So I ordered a very big piece of fabric. Now, if I don't use it for Gaia, again, I'm sure I'll be using it for something else. So not really a problem. Now, while we're on that, the other piece I ordered was, yeah, this one was from Pulse Stitches. And this was my other option for Gaia. And again, it still might be an option. This is 28 count even weave in heirloom. And it's just a little bit pinkier than the June. And again, it's enormous. It's absolutely enormous. That's still only, that's half of it. Again, it's ridiculous. It's just, look at this. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge and it's very beautiful. This one maybe even more so than the June. It's so gorgeous. It's kind of that pinky with a slightly yellowy tones and it's really pretty. So again, if I'm not using it for Gaia, there is no way this isn't getting used for something else. So really not a problem. And on the Gaia front, the reason I'm not sure I'm going to use either of those is because I've ordered a third piece of fabric, at which point I kind of have to pick from those. I don't think I can keep ordering fabrics um, just and not using them. I have a third piece, it's quite different and that's on order with sparklies. So we will see how that turns out. Now, while I was on a bit of a pulse stitches kick, I also ordered this one. So those pieces I ordered um, from the website. So from Chromatic Alchemy and from pulse stitches. So obviously they were dyed to order. So it took some time to arrive. Pulse Stitches also put pieces in their Etsy shop that are basically ready to ship. And I grabbed, that was when I grabbed the Shimmering Seas for the giveaway. And I also grabbed this piece as well. This is Royalty. Turn it around this way as well. How gorgeous is that? Look at that. Absolutely stunning. Again, the camera probably won't do it justice. And it's a lovely, let's see if it likes any of it close up. Look at that. Not too bad, actually. It is really beautiful turquoisey blue, purples, absolutely stunning. Have no idea what I wanted that for. 
I just wanted it. And again, I'm pretty sure something will look lovely on that. So that was maybe only a tiny bit fabric crazy, but then it got a lot worse because I joined the Coffee Craft Fabrics Facebook group. So it's a group on Facebook, it's a private, you can look for Coffee Craft Fabrics um, and request to join the group. And Megan from Coffee Craft Fabrics just does fabrics, she kind of just does a drop. And there is what there is and um, you can put your name against it and try and get hold of pieces. So she did a Fabric Super Sunday. In fact, there's another one coming up fairly soon. And she just dropped all these fabrics. She was teasing them beforehand and there was one I knew I really wanted. And that was this one. I mean, you can see why I wanted this because pink. And it's lovely. It's No, it's definitely gonna look lighter on camera than it really is. It's not going to be kind and show me, show you exactly what it looks like. And if I, yeah, it's not too bad actually. That's not too bad. It's a lovely kind of rose pink, not too pale. In fact, I thought it was going to be a bit paler, but it's so beautiful. So yeah, that was the one I had my eye on from the teasing. And then I decided to order this lovely brown, which again, I thought was going to be lighter. That's actually pretty, yeah, that's showing not too bad on screen. Um, it's definitely a bit darker than I thought, but I'm sure I can find something for that. And then this third one, which I absolutely wasn't, I wasn't in the market for, but look at that. Just look at that. So this is all, these are folded in half still, so they are bigger pieces of fabric. They're all this size. They're all 18 by 27 inch pieces of fabric. They're all 28 count even weave. So maybe slight tangent again, only a little one. Uh, I'm really going for 28 count even weave as my fabric choice, purely because if I'm going to stitch any kind of fancy lady on it and there's any kind of beading involved, I think it's going to sit better and fit better on a 28 count. And even if it's a 28 count, it's probably shrunk slightly. Almost everything I've bought in a 28 count is around about a 30 count if you actually measure it. So I think that's gonna be perfect. If I'm ordering a 32 count and it's shrunk slightly, fitting beads on that I think is gonna be a nightmare, which is what I'm gonna to have to contend with with Rossa. And I know I haven't actually tried it to know this yet, but just from all the comments I've read, I do think that 28 count is going to be much better. And because it shrinks slightly, actually even just that slight shrinkage the thread coverage is actually pretty good on it, so I'm I'm not having an issue with that. So 28 count, and then if I need to do beading, then it will be it'll all be fine. So I mean, again, not not too bad, but you know I've still got a few more here, right? Because that was Fabric Super Sunday, but then there was a surprise drop of opalescent fabrics, and I hadn't bought any of the opalescent in the Fabric Super Sunday and some of the colours in this were so beautiful. In fact, I'm going to show you these three all together because somehow I managed to get three that all look, in fact, let me just, let me do this so you can see them all together. Because somehow I've managed to get three that just look amazing all together. I've got a greeny one, a pinky one and a blue one. So again, all 28 count even weave and these ones are all opalescent so let's have a little peek this one is I was gonna say maybe my favorite it's maybe the one that I know that I would use the most easily this one is the sort of pale blue mottled one really icy blue color it's absolutely lovely oh it yeah so so gorgeous I've already I've got about two things already that I know I could stitch on this so yeah that one is 100% going to get used this one is, oh my goodness, so stunning. Look at that. It's, it's like a really dusty pink. Absolutely lovely. Again, I don't know what I want to put on that, but it's just gorgeous. I was so excited when I opened these fabrics and I took them out and I was absolutely blown away. It really was. And here's the final one. So this is the greeny colored one. 
kind of greeny with little sort of greyish brown tones in it as well. Just so super stunning. I can't wait to find projects to put on those. And I have promised lovely husband Dr Tim that I will not be buying any more fabrics for a while. Unless it is specifically for a project. Except that, like I say, there is another Fabric Super Sunday. And I don't know if I'll be able to resist. And on this front, I am... I know it seems crazy. Like, I've just bought so many fabrics and I don't have projects lined up for most of them. But I'm really excited to build a selection of fabrics because I've never had that. I've tended to have really quite plain fabrics and I'm really excited to try more different ones and to have that stash of fabrics that then when I get a, a design that I want to stitch, I can go, that's the perfect fabric for it. And I never have that right now because I don't have a huge stash of fabrics other than a few plainer colours. So I am super excited to just have those fabrics available and then say, be able to say, yep, yeah, that's the one that I want to use for this project. So they will not be wasted. They're just going to wait for the perfect project. And that was the end of the fabric frenzy. For now. I can't promise that there won't be another episode like this one, but that's all the fabric done for now. So let's move on to my plans for the next couple of weeks. And as far as whip go is concerned, and if I'm mentioning whip go and you have no clue what it is, I've put a video in the description, which will explain it far better than me, but it's basically bingo. It's a bingo board for your cross stitch whips or goals for what you want to achieve through the year. And January's done, February's done, March will be done when I finish my 5,000 stitches for the dragon. So yeah, I think we're pretty good for that. The April draw has just happened and it's a really nice easy one because it's five days on House in the Woods, which is a project I haven't touched for quite a while, which is why it's on there to get me to pull it out and give it some love. So that should actually be pretty easy to do. And I'm really looking forward to pulling that back out and working on it. And the other one, is a new start because yeah I put new starts on my whip go board so obviously that won't be a problem although I don't know what it's going to be just yet you will have to watch this space other than that it's just this Easter weekend as I say is planned for beading the mermaid rossa and then whatever other stitching I fancy probably the sorceress at, at least a bit and that takes us into AOB. And I had a weekend away last weekend. We had a wonderful uh, celebration with my in-laws for lovely husband, Dr. Tim's aunt's 80th birthday. It was fabulous, just catching up with family, eating far too much, drinking far too much, and actually doing quite a bit of stitching. That was when I was stitching the coffee gnome. So yeah, I had an absolutely wonderful time. And of course we have Easter weekend coming up now and I'm excited for some stitchy time. But we are starting out with going to the Everything Electric show in London on Friday. So that's probably going to be exhausting, but pretty exciting. It's something that you may or may not know that um, lovely husband Dr Tim and I have another YouTube channel called Tim and Cat's Green Walk and it's all about our kind of green stuff that we've been trying to do to the house with solar panels, batteries, all that kind of stuff, electric cars. So we're excited to go to the show in London and see what's there. Obviously there will be electric vehicles, but also other stuff as well. And we are quite excited to see there's a couple of EVs that we would, we've got kind of got our eye on to maybe get in the future that aren't available yet. One of them is, I will, I'm going to have to put a picture on screen to show you because this would be the car that I would maybe get just to drive to work and back. It's called the Microlino. It's so tiny. It's so cute. It, it's a little bubble car. It's amazing. It does do 50 miles an hour and it would be perfect just for me to run to work and back um, or just down the shops. It'd be so perfect and it's so cute. I really want one and I want to know are they going to make it in pink? It would have to be the right pink though. I've never really been drawn. I love pink. Not sure about pink for cars, but 
I could be convinced if it was the right pink. Anyway, there you go, tangent um, again on cars. But that's our Friday and then lots of stitching. So that's Easter weekend for me, really. Oh, and we are going on the train to the show. So I think this will be a bit of a first for me to try stitching on the train. I know quite a few of you have done it um, and it works really well. So yeah, see how that goes. And my last little bit before I go is to shout out to some fabulous floss tubers. There are, as always, I have been watching so many. So today I just have two brand new cross stitches, both in the UK, and they are both absolutely fabulous. The first one is Peachy Stitcher, which is the lovely Julie, and she just has a short intro video and then one proper floss tube video. And I can already tell this is going to be a very dangerous floss tube channel for me to be watching because I really love her whips. Uh, we have definitely a similar style there and I can feel I'm going to get very enabled watching her floss tube, but in the best possible way. And my second one is Cross Stitch Mad Sarah, who again, she's just done her very first floss tube and it was absolutely brilliant. She's up, such a natural. And I again, I love her whips. So again, could be a dangerous watch for me, but so much fun, absolutely wonderful to watch. So I know there are an awful lot of new floss tubers uh, putting themselves out there, which is amazing other than the fact that I do not have enough time to watch everybody. But those two I've mentioned, they just had me hooked from the get-go. They were just really, really fun to watch and really enjoyed the whip selection. So I will absolutely be watching every episode that they put out in future. And I recommend you do the same. So there will be more lovely floss tubers each episode for me to shout out, but that was my two for this episode. I do hope you enjoy giving them a watch. Now, if this sort of cross stitch craziness has been your jam, then please do make sure to subscribe because there's more of this every couple of weeks. And in between these floss tube episodes, I'm also putting out videos with tips and tutorials that I really hope everyone will find useful. In fact, did you see my latest one? Just last week, I put a video out on what's the best cross stitch needle. Surprisingly, it didn't cause a huge controversy, which was actually really nice. It was lovely to hear all your opinions on needles. So no more tangents, I won't go off about needles, but just go and give the video a watch if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. I hope you've maybe had a nice little stitchy session while I've been chatting. Hope I'll see you back here again in a couple of weeks time. Happy stitching. Bye for now.